2 Kings chapter 5, if you would, please join me there. Hope you've had a blessed day. uh, We had a great time with our Lord (coughs) earlier today. I pray we have a great time with him again this evening. We're here Wednesday evening. You may recall this is the text of our study. And so it will be again this evening. You remember the little maid taken captive? <clears throat> Second Kings chapter 5. The Syrians invaded Israel. You recall, you may, if you were here Wednesday night, and uh, this happened in 845 B.C. B.C. stands for what, Brother Adam? Amen. (laughs) You might say this was um, the October 7th of 845 B.C., Now, Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, Israel's neighbors to the north, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. He was terminal. He was terminal. He had a death sentence, you might say. And everybody is without Jesus. Without Jesus. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive. She's not the only one they brought away. But she is one that is the principal concern of this true Bible account. Brought away captive, and uh, that's what they did with uh, the uh, most recent October 7th. Brought away captive out of the land of Israel. Yeah, they sure did. They did then, and they did most recently. Uh, A little maid, and God zooms in on this little, this young girl. And so beyond the fact that she was taken captive out of Israel, she has been made a slave in the captain's house. And she serves his wife. She waited on Naaman's wife. And so, well, let's pray. Father, Lord, so thankful for the uh, blessings that you have been imparting from your word to uh, all who are willing to receive your word, believe your word. We need every blessing you have for us. In fact, Lord, That's how we're going to make it, is uh, by the encouragement uh, that uh, you speak into our hearts out of your word, Lord. We need lots of encouragement. We need lots of help. We're a very needy people, and um, we're so thankful that uh, your resource is infinite. It's without end. You are able to meet our every need by Christ Jesus, and no matter no matter what uh, is uh, ongoing or what we're going through, and so we're so thankful to be here again with you. And Lord, we're asking you to bless. We're asking you to uh, guide. I, I know I certainly am. My thoughts, my words, temper. Uh, Everything I pray 
by your Holy Spirit. And because the fact is, without you, uh, we can't do anything. So uh, we're just lifting every detail of the service up to you, praying that you take the oversight and uh, just lead, guide, and direct. And when it's all said and done, please, Lord, leave us thinking about how great you are, how, how wonderful you are, Lord. Leave us thinking about you. And we'll just thank you and praise you all the more, Lord. And uh, yeah, we're uh, especially praying for our, our church family members that, or um, our brothers in Christ that are serving the nation. And they're holding the rope on their end. Help us to hold the rope on this end. Help us, God, not to let go of the rope and to... Um, value the freedom, use the freedom to propagate the gospel. Uh, so long as we are blessed with this freedom that we do hold dear. Freedom not to do wrong, but freedom to do right. And uh, to live a life that uh, is reflective of you, that honors you, glorifies you. That's what we'll use this freedom for. The cause of Christ. And uh, Lord, help us, I pray, just now. In Jesus' name, we ask, amen. There it is. Now, uh, most recent, October 7th, um, there was a uh, festival, a very large outdoor um, festival. And Many of those taken captive most recently in Israel were attending this outdoor festival. And it was, uh, this festival, um, some of the news commentators likened it to uh, what happens annually. I think it's here in the state of Nevada. It's, uh, it's uh, they call it a Burning Man. Uh, have you heard that on the news? Uh, mention made about this Burning Man Festival, you know. Um, just a very, very loud, uh, and some of the news commentators referred to the activity as revelry occurring in Israel. The revelers, they called them. And uh, the very early uh, videos that came from those who were being attacked because much of the attack most recently was video. And then those were sent out. Um, and uh, I could not help but notice a very, very large idol that um, was um, the focal point at this festival in Israel. It was a very ginormous idol. It was uh, a false god. We would say a false god. And you could, uh, I'm sure you could investigate for yourself. I, I, I mean, uh, unless they've been taken down from the uh, various venues. But, uh, and I was concerned when I saw that um, revelry, idol. Um, but to the point here tonight and where God is training his spotlight tonight is on this little maid and here's what we know about this little maid and, uh, and so uh, say it her her owners she's a slave and they own her. Um, despite the fact, notice in verse number four, and uh, or pardon me, in verse number three, the, the uh, words from this little maid, uh, 
that concerned her master, Naaman. And she said unto her mistress, that's Naaman's wife, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. Now, how incredible is that? How amazing is that? An enemy has taken her from everything near and dear to her heart, her family, her land, uh, into this uh, foreign country, enslaved her. And what do we find uh, coming from the heart of this little maid? Look at that, would you? And so, in essence, what is she doing in verse number three? Uh, well, I'll tell you, we can see. Number one, she's making mention of whom? Would God, would God, um, were with the prophet, God's spokesman, the man that God has called and the man that preaches the word of God that is in Samaria. And her reasoning, uh, for he would recover him of his Well, this is a window into the heart of that little girl, isn't it? We don't find her vindictive. We don't find her hateful. Um, we, you know, we find her concerned about uh, these people that she is now pressed into servitude. Uh, and uh, what an amazing commentary uh, about this about this little girl. Okay. Now, by the way. Um, She's in a land that uh, is uh, caught up, engulfed in idolatry, pagan idolatry, false gods. And she dares to mention her God. Her God. So I think it would be reasonable then to say that she is a very courageous, very brave um, young There are growing men that won't mention anything about God. Growing men. Here's a little girl who speaks up and speaks out about her God. <laughs> Isn't that just incredible? Um, now I want to look at that a little bit with you. And uh, uh, there's a reason I'm doing, led to do this, but let, so let's look. Um, let's begin, and you didn't mark your place here, but let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Um, and uh, that really troubled me. That really concerned me. That really bothered me. In the most recent, October 11, uh, 7th, uh, that there was this, uh, just this ginormous idol, false god, um, there at this most recent, uh, well, the media called it revelry. It, it was uh, it was uh, an outdoor, uh, uh, you know, music. I guess is what they called it. Festival, I think. And uh, I want you to see something here. And, and so let me get myself there to Second Corinthians. We would call this little girl a what? By virtue of the fact that she is now witnessing. We would call her a what? She's, the, her nation has been attacked. She's been taken captive. She's been enslaved. And now we find her witnessing for uh, about her God, her Savior. So we will call her a what? With regard to this attack, she is a what? How about this? She is a survivor. She survived. She survived. Yeah. 
that's really what I, w- I want to look at with you tonight. She is a survivor. And um, she is a witness for the only true and living God. She's mentioning him. She's talking about him. <laughs> and uh, now notice in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, that's where I need to get myself, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And we'll look at two verses, uh, 13 and 14. I hope you're there, 2 Corinthians 4, 13 and 14. Now watch this, watch this. Uh, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed. And therefore, have I done what? connect the dots why is she speaking because she believes she believes I believed and therefore have I spoken we also believe and therefore speak now speak is uh, a vehicle of communication. That's what speech is. It's a vehicle of communication. Uh, but uh, uh, the point here that I believe God is making is believers, believers do what? Believers speak. Believers communicate. Believers communicate. And that brings me back to the little maid. Why is she speaking? She is a believer. She is a believer. Now, this is God's word. Yeah. Um, Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. All right? So, of course... uh, you know, as it pertains to this passage, uh, we're speaking about the fact that our God lives. I serve a risen Savior. And, um, and so, now, um, let's, uh, let's look at some other verses, shall we, in Psalm 66 and verse 16. So let's do that. And I hope you'll stay with me. Our time will be very short. <laughs> at least from my vantage point, it's always very short. You know, I I don't know how it is from your vantage point, but Psalm 66 and verse number 16. So um, we're laying the groundwork here. We're establishing some facts about the little maid. She speaks because she, and she speaks specifically about Jehovah God, about about her God and Savior, um, because she's a believer. And believers speak believers speak okay that is believers communicate believers somehow some way a believer is going to share the lord with others okay now uh i hope you're there psalm 66 and verse number 16 <clears throat> now listen here the psalmist uh, come and hear all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. Has God done something for your soul? If I were to ask you right now, what has God done for your soul? How would you answer? He saved my soul. He saved my soul, amen? That's what God did for my soul. But the point I want you to take from this is uh, I will declare. That's what believers do. Believers declare what God has done for their soul. See? So, but let's go a little further. Isaiah 63 and uh, verse 7. So let's, let's, Isaiah chapter uh, 63, I hope that's what I said, 63. 
and uh, verse number seven, I will, uh, look at this, would you? That is just marvelous to me. So the principle is Old New Testament throughout the Word of God. I will do what, class? Uh -huh. there, there we go. There goes the believer witnessing again, testifying. <laughs> I will mention the loving kindnesses of the Lord and the praises of the Lord. According to all that the Lord hath bestowed on us. Believers will mention. Believers will declare. Believers will witness. It's the principle. Whether it's Old or New Testament, this is what believers do. They will communicate somehow, some way. They'll communicate. They're going to share the Lord somehow, some way. Um, and you know the great goodness of, you know, the goodness of God toward the house of Israel yeah. he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses so what are we going to declare what are we going to mention what are we going to speak? Well, we're going to talk about his mercy. We're going to talk about his love. We're going to talk about his kindness. Uh, we're going to praise him. We're going to give God the glory. We're going to share him with others. But, but there's something else. And, uh, and so let's look at chapter 62 and verse 6 of Isaiah. Chapter 62 and verse 6. Look at this. I have set a watchman upon thy walls. God speaking, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, meaning city of peace. Peace. Which shall, which shall never do what? This watchman will never do what? Never hold their peace. You know, that's another way of saying, will never keep their mouth will never zip their lips. Ye that make, here it is, make mention of the Lord. And what does God, how does God finish that? Keep not silence. Did you ever notice the devil's crowd? It's very bold. The devil's crowd never keeps silence. Ooh, this little maid, this little girl, she mentions, she mentions her God, her Savior. How about Jeremiah? Let's let's see what Jeremiah says in chapter twenty. Jeremiah decided to keep his mouth shut about God. Made the decision. Because he got roughed up a little bit. Hard labor, bread and water. You know, so he made the decision. I will not make mention of him. I will not make mention of him. You see it, Jeremiah 20, verse 9. Nor speak any more in his name. Jeremiah says, that's it. I am done. I am through. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary of forbearing. He says, I got tired of keeping my mouth closed. And I could not stay. He says, Jeremiah is a believer. I have believed, therefore I have spoken. 
He tried to keep his mouth closed, but he couldn't do it. Because he was a believer, he had to speak. He had to share about his God, his Savior. Let's go to some New Testament here. How about Acts chapter 4? Acts chapter number 4. A believer is going to communicate the salvation message. Somehow, some way, a believer is going to communicate. Here it is, Acts chapter 4 and verse number 20. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. <laughs> Did you get that? We cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Drop down to verse 31, same chapter, but verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. They, the disciples, the apostles, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they, and they did what? Church. That's what believers do, they speak. Now, a believer might, you know, like Jeremiah, decide, well, I'm not going to say anything anymore. You can only do that for so long if you're a believer. If you really know Christ as your Savior, you can only keep a lid on it for so long. Okay? It's going to come out. It's going to come out. Now, um, so... Here's what, as we go back to 2 Kings then, chapter 5, uh, it, it, it is so remarkable to me. So, if you go to the Hebrew and you look up the word God, this is a reference to the only true and living God, Jehovah God, um, and really the Lord Jesus Christ. So she's not, she's not uh, talking about some idol. Uh, she's not been involved in idol worship. Um, she knows, she knows the Lord. She believes and she speaks. And. Um, So they told Naaman, and of course, uh, he takes $5.5 million, he goes down to Israel, and thinking that he's going to have to buy this salvation, and uh, he finds out that, uh, he finds out that this cannot be purchased with money, it can only be received by faith, by believing. And so um, he's cleansed, he's, uh, he's clean, and, uh, and he becomes a believer. And uh, so um, now here's a, here's a young girl, here's a young girl. And uh, nobody is touching her. Beyond the fact of her captivity and enslavement, why on earth would God allow that? Well, I think for the reason that we read here. God had somebody that he wanted her to witness to. And yes, God did. God did move her from Israel to Syria. And uh, she goes to work. And Naaman comes to know her God, her Savior, becomes a believer. And uh, he leaves, he leaves uh, the worship. Uh, the worship, uh, if you drop down to verse 18, you can see the God that Syria worships. 
uh, spelled R-I-M-M-O-N. That's the Syrian false god, pagan deity. And he turns from that, he repents of that, and, uh, and he becomes a witness for, like the little maid for the uh, true and living God. And so, um, but this little girl, you know, a lot of things can happen beyond captivity and enslavement to a little girl. And, um, but didn't happen to her, did not happen to her, okay? I think God had a mission for her. She saw the hand of God, the providence of God in it all. And she went to work for her God, her Savior. Now, I want you to consider some verses with me in 2 Chronicles chapter 16. 2 Chronicles chapter 16. So we're going to, hey, we're here for a Bible study tonight. How about that? I went to church and they had a Bible study. Can you believe that? Well, they study the Bible at that church. Well, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. All glory to God, of course. Second Chronicles chapter 16 and verse number 9. That's really, that's really the hand of God in moving this little girl from Israel to Syria to witness. And she does. And uh, uh, a great leader of Syria comes to know her God and Savior. And um, it's a very powerful, powerful, true Bible account. And he goes back to Syria and begins to take a stand for the true and living God, the way the little maid is. He doesn't want to have anything more to do with that Syrian God, that false God. And uh, now notice, are you there? Verse number nine. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. She was all in. That's what the word perfect means. This little girl was all in for Jesus. And God says... Um, to those who are all in for me, he will show himself strong in the behalf of them. He will, he will take care of them. He will take care of them. Uh, let's, let's press on. Psalm 34 and verse number 7. I mean, you know, look, um, God just moved her. God had an assignment for her. And she saw that. She recognized that. She, at her young age, she understood what God was doing. She went to work for him. So many horrible, horrific, terrible things could have happened to that little girl, but they didn't. And that's because God was showing himself strong in her behalf. Now notice this in Psalm uh, 34 and verse number 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. Let me talk to you about that right now. Do you know why this little girl spoke up in a hostile environment? She's in a hostile environment. You just don't go preaching the gospel when you're uh, near the worship center of Rimon, the false god. <laughs> you just don't go talking about the only true and living God. You know why she spoke up in a hostile environment? Because she feared her God more than she feared man. Huh. How about that? I'm going to speak for my God because I fear him more than I fear all of you. <laughs> Your false God. And she spoke up and she spoke out. And uh, 
so she feared the Lord. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. And what does he do? See, they, you see, God is, God is, is hedging and protecting her <clears throat> through all of this. Go to Psalm 91 and verse number four, if you would, Psalm 91. Uh, but this is a, um, <clears throat> I'm just calling it uh, an October, <clears throat> an October uh, seventh scenario of 845 BC. We need to keep praying. We need to keep praying, praying for the peace of Israel. And uh, a lot of captives. Many of those captives were at that festival. Um, and there was a very, very large false god set up at that festival. And um, There are hundreds of millions on the planet right now that worship that false god that was set up at that festival. But this little girl, she worships the true and living God. And God had a job for her to do. And um, Psalm 91 and verse number 4, He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler buckler is a small shield to protect to hedge protect psalm 125 and verse 2 let's look there psalm 125 and verse number 2 psalm 125 and verse number 2 as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, <clears throat> so the Lord is round about. Who is he round about? What does that mean, round about? He's hedging, protecting. The Lord surrounds his people. The Lord surrounds his people. And uh, from henceforth, even for how long? Forever, forever. <clears throat> Boy, how amazing is that? Wow. Um, let's see what else we can find. Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 5, please. Zechariah chapter 2 and verse number 5. <clears throat> now if you see Haggai, it's right after Haggai. And so Zechariah chapter 2, it's right, right before Malachi. Malachi is the last book, so last book of the Old Testament it is. So Zechariah chapter 2 and verse number 5, For I, saith the Lord, shall be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. The reason why something uh, beyond the fact that God has her on assignment in Syria, God has her there to witness, to share, uh, the reason that, that nothing has happened to her beyond God moving her from Israel to Syria so she could witness to a very famous man um, is because God is around her. God is around her. She's a captive, but God is around her. What do we find in Luke chapter 21 and verse 18? <clears throat> Luke chapter 21. That really bothered me. It really, really disturbed me, and it still does. That there was a very large pagan deity, a false god, where all, where all the revelry was going on that really bothered me. The 
true and living God has taken care of this little girl. And I submit to you that the false God that was set up at that festival most recently did nothing to take care of those people. God has taken care of this little lady. And she is speaking up for her, her Lord, her Savior. Yeah, really, really does uh, make a difference. Luke 21 and verse number 18. <clears throat> Let me get myself there. Uh, and uh, look at this. <clears throat> Jesus but there shall not an hair of your head perish. Do you hear what God is saying? What the Lord is saying? Uh, the fact is, uh, without, without God's approval, without God's consent, nobody's going to touch. Beyond what God wills, what God designs, what, what God is doing with this little girl, nobody's going to touch her. And uh, the same holds true for all of God's uh, children. But keep not silence. Keep not silence. And we find uh, this little maid clearly, uh, per the promises of God, God hedged and protected. Uh, what else do we find in Proverbs chapter 3 <clears throat> and verse 24? Wow, time, can you believe it? I told you, it's gone. Proverbs chapter 3, and uh, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 24, when, when thou liest down, like you know when it's time to turn in for the evening, you know, get some rest, go to sleep, look what God says, when thou liest down, uh, thou shalt not be what? God says, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be what? A good night's rest. What is, what is God saying? What God is saying, nobody can touch you without his express approval and consent. Nobody can touch you. And... Uh, now, Hebrews <clears throat> chapter 13, Hebrews chapter 13, yeah. um, we, we left the area for uh, three days, and unbeknownst to us, as we were driving away from our uh, abode, the garage door came up. We were gone for a full three days. The garage door was all the way up. The door from the garage into the house was unlocked. We didn't know anything about it. Now, how'd you like to do that? <laughs> Drive off and your garage door go up because something was wrong with the mechanism. When we got back, the neighbors said, you know, they've really been concerned. <laughs> they said, your garage door's been wide open for three days. You know? And I thought, oh, no. <laughs> Walked in the door from the garage into the house. <laughs> in fact, was a little nervous about that, thinking, you know. Nowadays, if you leave your house and somebody else gets in, they have legal protection. Squatter's rights. I thought, boy. Uh, but do you know nobody had touched a thing in that garage and nobody touched anything in that house? And that place was wide open for three days in Las Vegas. 
was there. And I lived in a rough area. We had the FBI across the street with their big panel truck carrying, I don't know how many boxes of stuff from that neighbor's house. And then the next door neighbor, right next to us, we had the SWAT in their armored vehicle there. <laughs> oh, we lived in a rough neighborhood, I'm telling you, don't, you know. And you know, I'm just saying, nobody touches you unless God gives his permission for that to happen. And nobody touched a thing. I mean, they could have had it all. They could have had it all. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 6. And uh, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not do what? I will not fear what man shall do unto me. And that's the little maid, if we could hear her, that's what we would hear her say. I, I'm in the Lord's care. He's my helper. And, and how do we know she's not afraid of, of those men? Because she spoke up for Jesus. Incidentally, why, why don't most believers speak up? Well, it's a fear factor. It's a fear factor. Because most believers would rather, be, would rather please men than please who? Than please God. It's a sad reality. And the way to overcome that is just dive into the Word and fill up on the Word. Let the Word get in to you, and, uh, and then the Word will come out. What goes in will come out. So, uh, may God help us, you know. I mean, um, this is a lesson from a little girl. A little girl is our teacher tonight. A little girl. Enslaved, uh, living in the household of next to the king, the most powerful man in the whole country of Syria. Wow. And there she is, talking it up for Jesus. And uh, in the shadow of Rimon, the pagan false god there. Um, 1 Peter chapter 3, 1 Peter chapter 3, okay, a little bit, just 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 13. And who is it, or, and who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? That's a question God is posing. That is from God. In his word. Yeah. See, it just troubles me. It bothers me. It bothers me. Uh, her God. Her God is keeping her safe. But the false God I saw at the festival, <laughs> huge. Didn't tell. Didn't save anybody. Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1 and uh, verse... Uh, and there's another brother here that, that saw it saw it too in the videos, the early videos that came out of that attack. That false God. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 1, I'll just read 23 through 33 and uh, that'll bring us to a conclusion here. Uh, 23, Proverbs 1, 23, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Of course, uh, you know, turn you as repentance, repent. Um, 
be honest with God about the fact that you've sinned against him. Confess it, admit it, um, turn from it to the Lord Jesus Christ. And there you have, you have God's promise, what God will do. Uh, because I have called and, and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded, but ye have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof. It's God talking. Uh, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a, as a what? When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But, God concludes, but whoso hearkeneth unto me shall do what? Dwell safely. And shall be quiet from fear of evil. You know what I'm thinking as it concerns this little girl right now, this little maid? I'm thinking right about now, she's very glad that she has listened to the true and living God and she is obeying him, she is honoring him, she is serving him. Despite the troubles, that God has allowed to come into her life. She is still living for Jesus. And uh, God, is, uh, God is taking care of her in difficult circumstances. May God bless his word.